instead of downplaying the, the influence of Iran in Venezuela, um, you are being more realistic about it. Uh, you just mentioned something that did um, take away my fears, because I did think that Secretary Gates was downplaying the threat of Iran in Venezuela. And according to you, that's not happening. But um, uh, Douglas Fraser, I think it is, the uh, Southern Command. Of the Southern Command. He, he today or yesterday, he made a comment very directly, uh, saying that there still are very strong uh, links between FARC and the government of Venezuela. So. Basically, I see a difference, a little bit of a discrepancy between the attitude of the State Department and the Defense Department, and I want to know if I'm reading wrong or... I think so. I don't think there's any, any sunlight. You know, sometimes if, if, if something is not said exactly the same, it's interpreted as, a, you know, a confusing or, or, uh, or a difference or some kind of conflict uh, between the Defense Department and the State Department. Um, you had several questions there, I think, so I don't know if I'll be able to answer um, all of them. I, I think that the visit by Arturo Valenzuela to Ecuador and his willingness to engage the Correa government was a realization from both that there's a lot of things that we can work with despite our differences with the Correa government. Our relationship with Ecuador is different than our relationship with Venezuela. Even though they belong to this Alba thing, uh, not all Alba nations are the same, particularly in how they relate to the United States. So as long as the United, as long as the country is willing to extend a hand back of cooperation and to work on some issues, we will work with those countries. We will also articulate our differences. Now, with respect to the FARC, I think uh, you know, Arturo Valenzuela, I think, was testifying before Congress and. It wasn't General Frazier who was testifying before Congress and Arturo Valenzuela gave a speech. I don't know which ones. Uh, but they did not say it the same way. In other words, they, 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 the exact words of the serious threat weren't said the same way, and that was interpreted as confusing. But they ultimately did say the same thing, which is, although we don't know the magnitude, there is no question that the FARC uh, is working, whether with... Um, in, 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 uh, with, with, I'm sorry, with elements, knowingly or unknowing, with elements of the, of the Venezuelan government. There is a relationship there. Sometimes it's, it's unclear or it's difficult to discern the level and degree of that. I think, in general, both said the same thing, but they said it differently. With respect to I Iran, um, there was a report that was just recently published, unclassified by the Defense Intelligence Agency, that noted in a sort of a one-liner of the presence, and these are, I think, verbatim, the presence of the Quds force in Venezuela as an example of a broadening relationship between Venezuela and Iran. We all stand by that statement. What is the magnitude of that relationship? To what extent? It's not clear at the moment. So. Uh, I guess I would just reiterate what was on that, in that report. There's probably no two leaders that hate America more than Ahmadinejad and Chavez. They're buddies now. We need to be more aggressive with economic sanctions, certainly more aggressive than we were with Iran and Korea, which will most likely be happening. You said sanctions against, I'm sorry? Yeah, Venezuela. 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 Well, we, I, haven't, we haven't even taken sufficient sanctions against Iran, and it's probably too late. But as I said, there's probably no two world leaders that hate America more than Venezuela and Iran. Yeah, um, you know, it, uh, that, that may have been a little true, but of course we can't do policy on the basis of how a country hates us. It has to be based on what our, our interests and what our priorities are. Um, I, I can't speak to Iran, it's not my area, right? So I better not talk about that. Uh, I'll let my colleague in, in that shop do that. But in, with respect to Venezuela, you know, there is right now no evidence 
of any nuclear co uh, cooperation or any indication that uh, they're exchanging nuclear devices or material. Could that happen in the future? Could be. There's been a lot of rhetoric, but we, we don't have, I think, the luxury of making decisions on rhetoric. I have to make decisions based on evidence. That's what has to guide. That's the responsible policy-making approach. Yes, sir. Uh, it's kind of a two-part question. I'd like to first thank you for your talk. It was uh, excellent. Um, and kind of has to do with the previous question about Cuba as well. Um, and you may shoot the second part of the word by answering the first. Um, as far as the U.S. military and the Cuban military go, the issue of drug trafficking, Cuba being our second closest neighbor in the Caribbean next to the Bahamas, I know that there wasn't, as of the early 2000s, any kind of partnership in terms of working against the importation of drugs with the United States, which of course Cuba, with its growing tourism industry, which has not nearly hit its peak yet, also has a problem now with importation of drugs to the islands. Is there any kind of current work <coughs> against stopping drug traffic with the Cuban government since drugs sometimes traffic through Cuba to the U.S.? Do you want to ask your second question, or do you want me to? Oh, I, I guess, well, would that, I mean, is there then one country you think that is losing more by not pursuing that? No, all, co all countries lose when partnership doesn't. Okay. Or, but to answer your, your first question, and, and, and this cooperation with the Coast Guard has been going on for some years. This is not something that developed here with the Obama administration. We have a, a Coast Guard liaison officer in Havana. That's supposed to be the sort of the interlocutor or the link with their counterparts uh, to deal with the with the common challenge uh, of, of drug trafficking, and there's been some cooperation there. One can argue, I suppose, and go back and forth as to what it should be, uh, but there is that level of cooperation uh, existing. It has been going on for some time, and I see Ambassador Kaysen, who was in Havana, and he can talk to you more about the nature of that relationship. Mr. Deputy Director, I certainly appreciate your work for the country and uh, your clarification of some of the positions on our inter-American relations. However, one question comes to my mind, and that is the effect of the new policies, the Obama policies, on our relationship with the government specifically towards us of Cuba, Venezuela, and Bolivia. If I understand your question, and I'll use Bolivia as an example, the Secretary of State, Hillary Clinton, after, I think it might have been a UN meeting, said, we, we U.S. government, need to re-engage, she used the word reset, the relationship with Bolivia. So those were her instructions in the State Department. And she and the State Department embarked in a process of, again, following the President's approach of extending the hand to the Bolivian government. But the question was, is, has it had any effect? Uh, not as much as we would like. And the reason being, perhaps, because when you extend the hand, you, the other side has to extend as well. And, and we haven't had the same reciprocity that we would have liked and I think that would have been necessary. One last question. Wow. None? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.